Hi, we are in the middle of the wedding season and there are a lot of requests about the bridal makeup. In this video, I will share with you a lot of tips and tricks about the wedding makeup. I will show you how to do this makeup with the step-by-step -step guide. And of course, I will share a lot of hacks about the makeup longevity, which is vital for the bridal makeup. And on top of this, I will share my thoughts and ideas about the makeup itself. And I will show you which colors and which textures are most suitable for this type of the makeup. So stay tuned by the end of the video because it will be full of vital and important information. Let's start! My skin uh, is prepped with serum, cream and SPF on top. The first step is to use the lip balm before you are starting to do your makeup. While we will do the makeup, the balm will work and make our lips softer. I will start with the foundation and for this purpose I will use the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Foundation which has full coverage and it is 24 hours as it stated on the tube. This is the mini version, of course it is not the full size. One of the most important rules in the wedding makeup is to have no experiments either with products, with textures, with procedures before your wedding. I'm using this foundation, however, if you have the ideal foundation which suits you well, stay with it, don't try anything new. Or if you want to experiment or you want the foundation of the different texture, just do the rehearsal before the wedding day. And it's better to make the foundation rehearsal not once, but for several times and check how it sits on your skin, what is the longevity, to do the so-called wear test. What is also very important and vital for the wedding makeup and for not, the, not especially wedding makeup, but for all summer uh, makeups when you need high longevity of the makeup, you should be very cautious about the layers. So you should use very thin application and sometimes it's much better to apply two or three layers instead of one thick layer. Thin layers have, uh, have much longer longevity and they will stay in place for more hours versus the thick layers because the thick layer has a risk to slide off your face in one or two hours after you will finish your makeup. So be cautious and don't forget about this rule. And for the such occasion as a wedding, of course, you can invest a little bit more time in your makeup. So don't don't be in a hurry, just work in the products and give them a time to set between the layers. For the purpose of, the, of this makeup, I'm using full coverage foundation. This Makeup Forever is full coverage, but as you can see, I'm thinning it out and my skin looks much more even. Some discoloration is already not seen, but at the same time, my skin looks like skin, not as a mask. And of course, you don't want to look overdone. What we are trying to achieve with the bridal makeup is to look as fresh as possible, to be the best version of yourself without changing any features or inventing something new. And for this purpose, the thin layer of a very high coverage matte foundation is an excellent option. However, if you have very dry skin and you cannot tolerate such type of textures, just avoid them. Once again, as I've said in the beginning, just stick to your favorite foundation. If you have one, just use it. Also, very important hack is to invest in blending. Yes, it, it, it seems very boring in the beginning of the video that I'm blending and blending and blending, but this is the foundation for the great makeup. Just take your time. The foundation should look seamless. The second step is to use concealer and for the purpose of this makeup I will use Dior Skin Correct Concealer. It has full coverage, it is also stated that it is 24 hour wear and it is creamy texture and it is very moisturizing. The technique which I prefer for all occasion makeup is to use the brush for concealer application and not to use it directly on your skin from the bullet. Uh, once again, it is the same rule of thin layers. As we're investing time in our makeup, we can really afford additional five or four minutes for very thin and precise concealer application. So I'm doing the first layer. I'm using a, 
a small and very mild brush. I'm loading it, as you can see, from the back of my hand. I'm working under the eyes, around the nose. Don't forget this area. When we're doing a daily makeup and when we're in the rush, we are not doing the perfection. Today, we really want to have the perfect skin. But don't forget this area. In most cases, it has redness or dark area around your nose. Just invest your time and blend the concealer seamlessly into the side of your nose, around the nose. Now I'm doing the second eye with no hurry, with no rush. Very important uh, hack. When I'm loading the brush, I'm already topping off the excess. So the brush is loaded with the product, but not heavily. It gives me the full control of how many product I'm distributing. So I don't have any thick blobs, neither under eye area nor around the nose. The next area which I would suggest to focus on is your lip area. I also add a little bit of concealer around my lips and working it in. Wedding makeup is the camera ready makeup because you will have a lot of videos and photos taken during your wedding party. And for this purpose, you, you really need these seamless layers. And to achieve these seamless layers is by uh, making the merge between them. The beauty blender or the sponge is the ideal thing for that. I'm not loading any additional product of the blender. I'm using, as you can see, only the remainings from my foundation application. And what I will do, I will tap my concealer into the foundation. Once again, to blend all possible edges and to merge the layers. As of now, my foundation and my first concealer layer are blended in with the sponge. But still, I have some discoloration in the inner corner of the eye and I have some problems with my famous sunspots. And you might potentially have any additional areas which you want to cover. What I will do next, I will add one more uh, layer of the concealer. The technique will be the same. I'm using the product from the back of my hand, loading the same brush and moving with the same round tapping motions. And your famous step between the layers. Just take your beauty blender and once again invest your time in tapping the concealer into the foundation. As the next step, I want to add some freshness and color to my face. And for this purpose, I will use a Rare Beauty blush, their famous liquid blush. It is in the shade Hope. Let me swatch it for you. As I'm loading the brush on the back of my hand, I will use the same technique which I, I was using with concealer. I'm not applying directly the blush on our face because we can make a blob. I prefer to work from the back of my hand. So for me, this is the rule for the wedding or red carpet or any other occasion makeup. Loading the brush, distributing the product evenly. I'm really investing a lot of time in working the product into the brush because it will save you from stripes on your cheek. And it is very important, especially when you are really on a tight schedule while your wedding day. And with light tapping motions, I start to distribute the product on the high points of my cheeks and forehead and a little bit on the eyelids it will really fresh up your face, will help you to look as you had an eight hour sleep before your wedding and you didn't have any sleepless night because you were very nervous before your wedding day. I already start to have color on my face. It doesn't look flat anymore. It's very refreshing. Today in the industry, most liquid blush products are very pigmented. That's why be cautious about the application. It's better to invest a little bit of time and add additional layer instead of ruining the whole makeup with uneven application. Now I want to intensify the color. Once again, I loaded the product on the back of my hand and now I apply it again as a second layer. In this video, I'm not concentrating uh, on the colors and on the shades 
of the products. I'm more concentrating on the technique on how to apply. I will make a separate video where, where I will show various colors, textures, etc. If we will touch this topic briefly for the wedding makeup, use most natural colors, those which are very close to your skin tone. For example, when you are choosing the blush, usually you can think about the color when you're in the bus or in the sport gym, when you are exercising, usually your cheeks get pink. Just try to remember this color because this color is most suitable color for you because it is your natural tone. And our famous step with the Beauty Blender, once again, I have not loaded it with any additional product. I'm just blending the edges between the foundation layer and my blush layer. Now I want to fix all these layers with the finishing powder and for this purpose I'm using Hourglass Ambient Light Powder Palette. Once again I want to remind you that we are working in very thin layers. I'm distributing the product evenly as a thin veil of powder on top of my cream products. This step will add shine to the makeup and it will definitely increase the longevity of the whole makeup. So because we are looking in the foundation layer and the cream blush layer, it will just stay in place, it will not move. One more um, highlight, when, I'm, when you are choosing the cream blush, if you are sticking to the cream blush, try to use uh, long wear formulas which set after you blend them because there are some creams which can be set only with the powder of course they will work they still will work but if you are using long wear products which set and do not move definitely you are increasing your chances for the for your makeup to stay in place until the end of the party please be aware that i was not using the finishing powder in the t-zone because it has slight light reflective part and I want my T-zone to be matte and not shiny at all. And for this purpose, I will use a standard matte powder. This is Clarence Ever Matte Powder in shade 01 Transparent Light. Sometimes I'm even using the puff which is inside the powder, or you can use any brush. With the puff, I'm working in the nose area my forehead area and a little bit under the eyes and especially here on the side of the nose because I don't want to have any shine here in the center of my face. Once again I'm taking my time and I'm doing very very light layer of the powder. No baking, no all this trashy Instagram technique. We want very very natural flattering look. Don't forget your chin. Exactly for this makeup I would like to avoid the contouring technique because it might look heavy, a little bit heavy especially in real life. The product I would like to use is the bronzer. For this makeup I'm using powder products. A little bit of bronzer will give you the look as you were spending your time on the beach, that you are not tired, you have enough sleep and rest. Skin looks just flawless. A little bit time consuming process, but nevertheless. Now our base is mostly done and let's move to brows and to eyes. With brows, just use your everyday technique when you fill in the gaps and use the brow gel to fix them. Nothing else, you don't need any shaping or any creativity, you just need to fill in the gaps. I will do the process which I usually do with my brows. I have very thin brows with a lot of gaps in the middle and I'm using the Shiwi Mura pencil in, in hard formula to fill in these gaps. I want to avoid harsh lines. I just want to fill in the brow with the pencil and make the shade under the brow. It will make it look fuller and still very, very natural. I'm not the fan of very structured brows. I like natural vibe. So now my brows are loaded with the pencil. If you are using strokes technique, just stay with the strokes technique. It doesn't matter. Do your brows as you do them usually. But if you're using the pencil, it's a very good thing. 
is to comb them with the empty brush because it will blend the color and your brows will look full and natural. And I will fix it with the brow gel. This is Lime Crime brow gel. It has fibers in it. It adds a little bit volume and a little bit of color. This gel is in the shade Smoky. You can see now that the brows look full with the small bristles inside. With my brows on, I feel much more confident, for sure. And the brows, they really shape the face. It's a very, very important step. And now to the eyes. When you are doing the bridal makeup, it is very important to have the cream eyeshadow as a base or a special primer for the eyelids. I will use the cream eyeshadow from MAC uh, it is in shade Groundwalk. This is their Pro Longwear Paint Pot Formula. Their famous Pro Longwear Paint Pot Formula. A very good product. I really rely on it. I like to distribute cream eyeshadows with my fingers because I can control the thin application. And while the color is very close to our natural skin tone, there is no any need for the brush. While I'm doing my second eye, let me explain you why do we need this cream shadow underneath. The thing is that while the photos are taken, usually cameramen, they use the harsh light. And if you will stay only with the powder shadow on your eyes, the most probably all the photos will have the faded color and you will just you lose all your makeup on photos or on the videos. It will not be seen. But when you have two layers, the application looks natural, but at the same time, much more opaque because there are two layers and the skin will not be highlighted by these harsh lights from from cameras i would suggest to use the natural color which is very close to your skin tone but a little bit deeper first of all it will give you the shape Im immediately you you can see that my eyes look bigger a little bit more vivid and the second uh, reason for using this color palette is that it will be much easier to blend and we will need to blend a lot I don't want to do any liners and flicks, but for sure I want to have the shape which is elongated and has a feeling that we have an eyeliner on our eyes. And we are using the long wear pencil. This is from Romanova Makeup and, and on purpose I'm using the brown, not the black eye pencil. The reasoning behind why I'm using brown and not black, of course you can also use black, but black will, lead, will look a little bit more aggressive and as a harsh line, while brown will give you the shape, it will be much easier to blend it and at the same time it will make your eyes look vivid. I'm working in the color, I've made a flick as you can see, but I want to be diluted, I want to be blurred, I don't want the flick to be very precise. Then I take the same pencil and I work the color between the lashes, I'm adding the color to my upper waterline. I don't want to have any light gaps on the top line, I want deep brown color along the whole lash line. So now we are done with our cream eye products. And we are going to the powder products. I'm taking the fluffy brush and I want to start blending between my brow bone area and the cream eyeshadow which we have applied. For this purpose I'm using the bronzer. The bronzer is a great transition shade to put in the crease. It will deepen your crease and at the same time it will help to thin out the color and not to make the sockets too dark because we do not want to have a lot of colors on our lids for this makeup. We just want to have them look as natural as possible, but at the same time we want our eyes to be vivid. And now let's look at the colors and the palette, which is very suitable for the wedding makeup. You can see that all these colors are very boring, natural, brown, beige, peachy shades. They are perfect for this makeup. What we want to do next? We want to use the light shadow and place it on the moving lid. 
Uh, by the way, this is Romanova makeup eyeshadow palette in color chocolate and coffee. It has very good pigmentation and texture. It's produced in Italy. Very good quality of eyeshadows. The only problem which I experience with this brand, not the brand, but eyeshadow palettes from this brand, is the quality of the packaging. Sometimes these shadows, they fall out of the packaging. While we're distributing the color, the light color on the moving lid, our pencil liner is becoming a little bit less visible. It is our target because we have the bright lash line, which is seen and vivid, but at the same time, not overly dramatic eyeliner. Now I want to take something like this, medium brown color, not very dark, not very light, and I want to apply it on the lower lash line. I'm using the same brush, I have not changed the brush yet. This step seems to be very counterintuitive because we were highlighting with the concealer a lot the area under our eyes, but this step will make our eyes vivid and bigger. Now I'm taking the clean brush, clean eyeshadow brush without any product, and with the help of this brush I'm blending the color between foundation and concealer and the eyeshadow. Of course, we want very soft application, soft colors. Now I'm taking very small brush and dark brown color from the palette. And with this product, I will once again go on top of the eye pencil. I will draw the fleek on top of the pencil. And I will blend this shade with the lighter eyeshadow which we have on the moving lid. So yes, we have the fleek, yes, we have the eyeliner on, but it's, it's blurred, it's very mild, we don't have any harsh lines. And also with the same brush I want to add a little bit of brown eyeshadow, dark brown eyeshadow on the outer corner of my lower lash line, just a little bit. Taking the same clean brush without the product and once again working the color. The small trick which I like to do on the, at this stage of makeup is to take a small drop of concealer on the back of your hand, the clean Q-tip, and I load the Q-tip with this drop of concealer. It will work as a razor and I'm rolling the q-tip under my wing. By doing this I will remove all fallout which I might potentially have from the eyeshadows and once again I will make an additional blending step between the skin and the eyes. Very easy thing but it is a game changer. Also what I like to do with the wedding makeup is to take a clean q-tip and clean and dry the area of your lower waterline as I want to fill it in with the light eye pencil and to highlight the area. I want to use the beige uh, eye pencil in the waterline to highlight the area. This is Makeup Forever brand. The product is called Artist Color Pencil and it is in shade 502 Infinite Sand. This is a perfect color if you are close to my skin tone for working into the waterline because I will show you now because it highlights the area but it doesn't look very white and you don't have this old school ballerina effect. You will have the highlight in the lower waterline but it will look very natural and very flattering and you will have the appearance of much bigger eye just with the one or two swipes of, of this pencil. And the quality is, uh, is great. I, I really love this Makeup Forever pencils. Now it's time for mascara. Use waterproof mascara on the wedding day. It's, it's highly recommended. At the moment I'm using not a waterproof mascara just because I do not have one in the studio. But if it would be a real event, for sure, I will stick to the waterproof mascara. But for demonstration purposes, this one is just than enough. 
This is Lash Paradise Mascara in black. Add several layers of mascara. If you have good lashes, they are thick and long. You can even avoid using falsies. Of course, it's 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 highly recommended to use falsies for the wedding makeup. But if you want modern look, just your natural look, but a little bit better, you can stay away from falsies. Our upper lashes are ready. Lower lash line. Don't forget to add mascara on the lower lash. Our eyes are done. I really love this look. If you also love this look, thumbs up. It will really support the channel. And now moving to the lips. Lip makeup is very important for the wedding day. First of all, let's wipe off the balm which we were using in the beginning. Just clean your lips with a tissue. What I will recommend for the wedding day is to use the shades which are very close to your natural lip color. Um, I'm using today the Chic Pencil, lip pencil in shade Florence. This color suits me perfectly and I start to work with the shape. I try not to overdraw the lip line just to follow the natural shape of my lips because I don't want any artificial effect of very full lips. I want just my natural shape of lips, but a little bit better. With age, we are losing the color on the edge of our lips. And if you will just feel in this edge with the color, back with the color, you will immediately have much bigger lips without any overdrawing. Don't forget the corners and the lower lip. I'm also, while drawing, I'm making very, very small circular motions. The, the line is not harsh, not very precise, but it is a little bit like blended, blurred line. Now our lip line is done. What I will also do for the longevity of the makeup, I will fill in the lips with the pencil. Just famous trick, all time favorite trick. The lips are filled in and I want to blot off the excess of the pencil. I want the layer to be a little bit thinner. You can apply matte long wear lipstick or you can apply creamy lipstick. Actually, it doesn't matter. The creamy one you will need to reapply, but it will be much more comfortable during the day. It's up to you to decide. Just focus on, on the color. The color should be, once again, very natural, which suits you the best. In most cases, it is the same color as your inner lip. You can see how close the colors are. So this is nearly my natural shade. This is uh, Chic Cosmetics in color 101 Dusty Rose. And I'm adding with tapping motions a little bit of lipstick on the center of my lip. I have very dry lips and that's why I prefer cream textures. I want to reapply a little bit of powder on the T-zone just for more con shine control. This is the finished makeup and you can see that it was a little bit time-consuming procedure but for sure it, it, it was worth it because your makeup will stay in place for hours without moving even while you will party hard. The colors are flattering, the eyes are vivid, nothing feels really overdone and your skin looks like skin. It's very natural and it will look perfect on photos and on camera. So thank you for watching. Thumbs up and subscribe. Your support is really important for this channel. See you in the next video. Bye.